Pokemon Quest was created by Game Freak and became the new craze on the Nintendo Switch, especially since it was basically the first new Pokemon game on the console. And to top it all off, it was completely free upon release, meaning that you could just download it free of charge from the Nintendo Store on your device and start playing straight away. So surely millions of people would have downloaded it, right? Well, correct. Because upon its release in 2018, within a week of being released, it had reached over 7.5 million downloads. So what happened to this Minecraft style Pokemon game and why is it barely talked about nowadays? The game introduced a different gameplay style compared to traditional Pokemon games, with a focus on exploration and simplified mechanics. While it was initially well received and gained a considerable player base, its popularity warned over time, leading to fewer updates and content additions. And that's exactly why it failed. You see, at the beginning of its release, players enjoyed the new style of gameplay, but it became very repetitive over time. One of the most glaring issues with Pokemon Quest was its overly simplistic gameplay mechanics. Usually with regular Pokemon games, even sideline ones, there's a ton of traditional depth and strategy that goes into the games. But with this game, that wasn't the case. Players were reduced to tapping a screen as their Pokemon automatically attacked enemies leaving very little room for actual skill or decision making. And not to mention, the lack of challenging battles made the game a lot more tedious than it already was, because one of the biggest drawbacks of the game was its excessive focus on grinding, having to endlessly repeat the same levels in order to gather resources and ingredients to cook meals for your Pokemon. This cooking process was dependent on your luck to find rare and powerful items, which kinda hindered the feeling of accomplishment and progression, which in turn made the game feel more like a chore than an enjoyable gaming experience. But that wasn't the worst part of this entire mess. To further compound its shortcomings, the game implemented an energy system. This might sound like a great idea at first, but it wasn't as it limited the number of expeditions you could go on and undertake in a single session. This mechanism is commonly used in free-to-play mobile games, but is unfortunately quite hard to get right, something that Pokemon Quest definitely got wrong, as their attempt at implementing this mechanic was very obvious in the sense that they just wanted to encourage players to spend real money on in-game purchases. And by doing so, the game alienated a lot of players who felt forced into the microtransactions to fully enjoy the game. What makes a Pokemon game great is usually its story and depth. Something that Pokemon Quest severely lacked in terms of narrative and character development. Which of course I don't blame the game for not having any as it's not supposed to be that sort of mainline story game. But there still wasn't any sort of reasoning to continue playing the game. Like I'd rather switch on my Pokemon Emerald or my Game Boy and start playing that instead. Why would I waste time playing something that doesn't seem rewarding? especially when I'm confined to a limited set of environments, in turn making players such as myself become less invested in the game. There were updates to the game, but most of them were China or Japan exclusives, meaning that us players in the UK, USA or other places around the world didn't get to experience more of what maybe the game had to offer. With the announcement of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee coming out the same year, Fans just patiently waited to finally experience what Pokemon games should feel like on the brand new Nintendo Switch, leaving Pokemon Quest abandoned and forgotten, to never be spoken of again.